Hey, it's Kyle Henderson of Bama Football on YouTube. In this video, I'm going to talk about what I learned following Alabama's 49 to 21 victory over Kentucky. It's Alabama's ninth victory of the season. So quick take, listening to Coach Saban's press conference, he said, we proved a lot of naysayers wrong. And he talked about the fact of how this team has transformed from the beginning of the season to right now. Listening to Mark Stoops, it's a great press conference following this game. He's a Kentucky head football coach. And he said, this Alabama team, they are going to make a deep run. I'm telling you, nobody wants to deal with this Alabama team. The way they came out in this game was straight fire. They were missing a lot of key components today. Uh, Jermaine Burton was out sick. Coach Saban mentioned that. Ja'Cory Brooks, we've seen him off and on. Uh, he didn't play on the defensive side. You had Deontay Lawson who was out. You had Jalen Key. This team started out hot, 21 to zero. And for uh, the beginning of this game, I thought Alabama was gonna score, what, 56 or whatever they wanted to, to be honest. But it was that muffed punt that really gave Kentucky a little bit of life. Kentucky puts on a touchdown. It's 21 to seven after the first quarter. Now, Coach Saban did defend Kool-Aid in the post-game press conference. I want to hear from you inside the comment box. What do you think about that particular play? To me, from what I saw, it looked like Kool-Aid just didn't catch the ball. Uh, but Coach Saban goes in detail about that. You can watch that on Coach Saban's press conference, which we did upload a clean version to our YouTube channel. Now, Jalen Milrow is the first quarterback and player at, in school history to account for three touchdowns passing and three touchdowns rushing in a game. That's incredible. Six touchdowns uh, this game, four last game against LSU, 10 touchdowns in the last two games. He's on fire. Now, if you rewind to that first quarter, he did go down after he took a hit to the thigh, it looked like. Um, trainers checked him out. He was hobbling around for, I don't know, a quarter and a half, but it didn't seem to affect his play. Um, he's a big dude. We all know that he's uh, very durable. And he finishes out with 230 yards passing. Now, he should have thrown the football away instead of forcing that pass that turned out to be an interception. Coach Saban talked about that as well, um, said, got to know when to dump it off. And Jalen didn't do that. Uh, but overall, he played a really strong game in 15 to 22 with 234 yards. Uh, Coach Stoops had a lot of positive things to say about Jalen Miro following the game. Rushing wise for Alabama, uh, nine carries for 43 yards for Jace. Uh, McQuellen, and then you had Milrow who had 36. You had Justice Haynes, the true freshman, with a big brace on his arm, um, 33 yards, and then Roy Dell Williams with uh, 20 yards uh, rushing the football. Receiving wise for Alabama, you had Kobe Prentice who had 74 yards, Jalen Hell who had 51 yards, Amari Nyblack who had 38 yards, uh, Nyblack and Prentice with uh, touchdown catches today, which I thought, um, you know, those guys did a great job. And then Roy Dell Williams, um, the yak yardage on him did a really great job catching the football and finding the end zone. So those guys did a really good job on the defensive side. You had Caleb Downs who had seven tackles. You had Taryn Arnold who made a fantastic interception, read the ball, jumped it, did a great job getting Alabama the football back. Now, late in the game, Alabama allows a long run by uh, Kentucky's backup running back. And um, the following play, Kentucky goes to punch it in. <clears throat> excuse me, it's Ramon Jefferson, right? Breaks off that long run. And Kentucky's at the one yard line. Now, Christian Story hit that young man clean and the ball goes out and he scooped it. And I was wondering why they didn't review it. Um, you look at the score, it should have been 49 to 14. Um, I don't know. I mean, if, and, and I know it's only one play, but you rewind to the first quarter when that muffed punt, Alabama had so much momentum. They were just straight rolling. And uh, it's a good win overall. And I think it's a really solid win. And I think it continues to show everybody that, how good this team is, how they have transformed. And it's another road win in the SEC. Look, Kentucky has played teams close. Uh, the team that blew them out, Georgia and Alabama. But other than that, they played Missouri close. They played Tennessee close. And it's a well-coached football team. I think we all know that. So what does this mean going forward for Alabama? Well, number one, it means that they won the SEC West. So this was one of their... Uh, goals that they had set out at the beginning of the year. They have a pyramid and it talks about, you know, winning uh, your regular season games and then getting to the uh, conference games and the SEC championship. There were so many people that didn't feel that this team could get to the SEC championship uh, when they looked at this team at the beginning of the season, especially after that South Florida game, after the loss against Texas, it seemed like things were in disarray. But they've continued to do a great job um, throughout 
you know, this conference play has been really amazing to to be seven and zero in conference play. I think says a lot about this team. Uh, winning the SEC West says a lot about this team. There was a lot of guys who didn't play today, um, injuries or whatever, and they still played at a very high level. You're missing Deontay Lawson. You're missing Jalen Key. You're missing Jermaine Burton. Um, a couple other guys uh, who didn't uh, necessarily play in this game, but Alabama is still able to put together four quarters. Um, a couple interesting points. I saw Emmanuel Henderson on special teams. We really haven't seen him uh, a lot this year. He had the hip injury. And then um, on the sidelines was Devontae Smith. Now, Devontae Smith, yes, Alabama has another Devontae Smith. Uh, he was out with the foot injury. We haven't even seen him this entire season. He was back uh, at least suited up, which is good news for Alabama, considering uh, the fact that Jalen Key is out uh, with this game. But you did have Christian Story filling in at that safety position. I want to hear from you about this team. Do you feel like Coach Stoop says? And I've been saying this for a long time. Look, I feel that Alabama is going to make a deep run. I don't think that Alabama loses another game. And that's not necessarily rat poison. That's my opinion. I just think that you look to the defense being as consistent as they've been this entire season. And once uh, they get some of these guys back, Deontay Lawson, Jalen Key, even Devontae Smith, who knows? Um, that could even add more uh, firepower on that defensive side. I, I think the defensive line has been playing really well. Um, the linebackers have been great. I loved how uh, Chris Broswell, man, he just picked up Leary and just threw him to the ground. Uh, with that said, Leary did make a good play, escaping a couple Alabama defenders today to be able to uh, get the ball out. Today he finished 17 at 31, 158 yards with a touchdown. Um, and then Davis, who who's a really good running back for Kentucky, he was held to 26 yards, but he did have two rushing touchdowns do you feel that this team can make a run are you on this alabama train do you feel that um, they can match up well with the top eight being that their offense has now come along that we now know that Jalen milro is capable of just putting this team on his back they have a lot of weapons i did like the fact that tommy reese continues to be more creative um, with some of his offensive weapons we saw kendrick law um, in the backfield we continue to see them trying to figure out how to get him the football the running backs are performing at a very high level this team is hungry. This team knows that every single game is an elimination game. This team is capable, as Snoop said, to make a very deep run. Now, when we look at the playoff picture and things that are going into this particular game, there's a lot that needs to happen. Michigan uh, defeated Penn State, and I'm cutting this video before uh, Ole Miss and Georgia have even played. But um, most of the, the teams that are in the top eight, all of them, in fact, are favorites, and they should be. But we still have to get to that conference uh, championship weekend. And I think, you know, some dominoes are going to fall. And all Alabama can do is to continue to win. They control their own destiny in the sense of you have to win. Now, other things that uh, they don't control are, you know, how are other teams going to perform? You can't think about that. This team, I feel, is laser focused. I feel that they've done a great job, despite them getting better, not buying into the rat poison. And I think they have a mantra of that let a naysayer know. Even Coach Saban said that. As I mentioned, this team knows what's at stake. And I think they are 100% capable of um, making a deep run and winning the whole thing. It's going to be um, amazing to continue to see this team in these next two games. You have Chattanooga, and then you go on the road against Auburn. That game is going to be very difficult. We all know that. The Iron Bowl, who knows what could happen. But um, I really believe in this team. I have a lot of confidence in this team. The offense is doing their thing. And Jalen Milrow, I'm playing exceptional Heisman contender. You know, I, I think that um, the Heisman people kind of have who they want already at the top spot, the Washington quarterback, LSU's quarterback, whatever. But Jalen Milrow is turning heads, and rightfully so. 10 touchdowns in the last two games. He's been on fire. My name is Kyle Henderson of Bamboo Football on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching all our videos. We'll catch you soon right here at Bamboo Football on YouTube.